What's up, babes? So, I know it's been a while since I dropped the YouTube video, but listen, <laughs> life been life been, and I hope y'all understand. But recently, I have been battling with ovarian cysts, and I felt like I needed a little guidance. Um, and I'm sure there's a couple of girls out here who may be going through something similar or have been through something similar who need a little guidance too. So, this is my story. I went to the doctor a total of five times. Um, I'll tell y'all why first time I went to the doctor the doctor really didn't run any tests I just told him my symptoms and he basically prescribed me metronidazole which is an antibiotic and diflucan just in case that antibiotic caused me to get a yeast infection um didn't run any tests um I ended up taking those and my symptoms ended up getting progressively worse. So the second time I went to an urgent care, um, male doctor, both of them male doctors, um, the, the doctor did do a pelvic exam, basic blood work, PICS test, um, and ended up giving me a shot of Rocephin to treat, quote unquote, um, uh, infection, infection in my tubes. That's what he said he thought it was and prescribed me ibuprofen 800 for the pain. Y'all, when I say that, ibuprofen didn't do anything because I was back at the doctor um, a couple of days later. And I think this time I went to an emergency room, um, seeing another male doctor. Um, he did a pelvic exam, blood work, the basics, and ended up prescribing me azithromycin and naproxen 500. So I was taking 1,000 milligrams of naproxen a day instead of taking the ibuprofen. Um, naproxen is basically just a leave. So basically, I was just taking a high dosage of leave. Now, the, uh, the naproxen did work, but I felt like it did have a negative effect on my heart because my, my heart beat started beating very erratically. So I ended up stopped taking that. And because of you know the situation with my heart and my ovaries i ended up going to the emergency room again just to check on everything um and this time i saw a female doctor which made all of the difference because she did get me in for an ultrasound and a checks x-ray and that's when i found up found out that i had cysts in my ovaries she um continued to say that the cysts weren't big enough to operate on yet and um she sent me home, you know, basically telling me just to take the pain medication and they'll get better on their own um, and to follow up with a gynecologist if the pain persists. Um, so I did book a follow up with a gynecologist and they didn't do they didn't run any more tests. Um, they basically were saying the same thing that the woman said at the emergency room. Um, they'll have to go away on their own. They're not big enough to operate on. Um, so they sent me home. And y'all, when I say I was just in so much pain, I was just bloated. I could only sleep on my back. If I turned to my side or slept on my stomach or anything, I just felt like my uterus was falling out. I was in so much pain. And not only that, now my heart's beating erratically. Uh, it was just horrible. It was a horrible experience. And I only started feeling better when I started eating better. So you got to think about it. I was in the bed ordering DoorDash, eating fast food, anything that was quick. That's what I was eating. So I got up google what you know foods were good for ovarian cysts and i made a change so i started eating better and that's the only time i started feeling better so i wanted to give you guys the my tips for resolving ovarian cysts and i hope this helps someone so this is what i eat in a day treating ovarian cysts let's get into it and before we get started, I do want to say what I think started my cyst was the fact that I stopped taking my birth control abruptly. My gynecologist, she instructed me to start back taking it just for a little while to get my hormones back under control. But I had been on the same birth control for about four years since I started college and I stopped taking it abruptly. And that could have threw my hormones out of whack. So I like to keep my mornings pretty consistent. I always start my days with hot tea. I use Taylor's Organic Chamomile Tea, which I picked up at my local fresh market, which helps with inflammation. And I also add ground flaxseed, which is an omega-3 fatty acid that helps control hormone disruption by lowering the body's androgen levels. You can find flaxseed at any fresh market, Kroger, Publix, anything like that, and just ground it up in a blender. That's what I did. Or sometimes you can find it already ground. And I add a little bit of honey for taste because I'm not really big on sweeteners. Cheers. 
So here I am prepping an avocado to go on my breakfast sandwich. Avocados are rich in magnesium and glutathione, which helps to support liver function. I love avocados. I eat them every day in some way, shape, or form. They are truly a superfood and well worth the hype. When purchasing your avocados, please make sure that they are USDA certified organically grown. And for storage purposes, I have just put the seed back into the avocado and wrap it in press and seal. The type of bread I use is Dave's Thin Slice Killer Bread. It's organic, it's super good. They have thicker slices, they have bagels, they have snack breads and granola bars and things like that. Um, you can find it at your local fresh markets, Whole Foods, Kroger's, Publix. I've been seeing them at Walmart recently. It's really good, I 10 out of 10 recommend. You don't have to compromise on taste because they have white bread, good seed, um, whole grains, they literally have it all. So I recommend that you guys check them out. Sometimes I do eat my breakfast with a side of tomatoes and a fruit, like either a orange or a pear. I recommend all three as they are all high in fiber, which is good for treating ovarian cysts. Moving on to lunch, we are eating wild caught salmon, which I am going to season very lightly with my seasonings of choice. If you're going to eat any type of fish or anything else that comes out of the ocean, make sure that you're getting it wild caught and not farm raised. I do eat the entire fish, including the skin, so I season them front and back. If you don't, it's completely up to you. You can take the skin off, but I, for one, do eat the entire fish. Broccoli is rich in fiber and endo 3 carbonyl foods, which helps to release excess hormones like estrogen from the body. Although white rice is my grain of choice for this meal, it's not the best option, so I will be showing you guys how to cook quinoa later in the video. Here, I'm just placing my salmon in my Ninja Foodi indoor grill and setting the timer for 10 minutes. My goal with this video was to make it as detailed as possible because when you're just beginning to learn how to cook, you just don't know. And there's a lot of people that contact me like, hey, I just need more details. I need you to break it down to me how you cook simple things like rice, which I understand. It's okay. We all start somewhere. So don't feel a ways about not knowing how to cook simple meals like rice or fish or vegetables because we all start somewhere and it takes a lot of practice. I paired this meal with beetroot juice, which helps to alkalize the body and support liver function. Right after making my lunch, I went ahead and prepared the marinade for the tuna steak that I'll be cooking for dinner.
After preparing the marinade, simply pour it in a container with your tuna steak and let it sit in the refrigerator for at least two hours. Cabbage is also a really good food to help with ovarian cysts because of its omega-3 fatty acids and indo 3 carbonyl, which helps to control hormone disruption. Please make sure that you are washing your fruits and vegetables really good, especially if you're like me and you like to get your produce fresh and from a farmer's market where it's organically grown locally nearby, there could still be some creepy crawlies, bugs, or even listeria. So make sure that you're washing those produce. I do want to say, even though I use chicken stock here, it was before I realized that chicken quite possibly could have been one of the things that was disrupting my hormones. I'm not sure what they're putting in the chicken these days, but it does not taste like it used to when I was little. I'm sure I'm not the only one that thinks this, but even after using the chicken stock and the cabbage, it did irritate my ovaries a little bit. So just a heads up. Quinoa is an antioxidant rich whole grain that is also high in fiber, which is super good for treating ovarian cysts. I cook it the same way I cook my rice, bring the water to a boil, pour the quinoa in, cover, turn the heat low and let it simmer until the water is gone. And here I'm taking the tuna steak that we had marinating in the fridge and searing it for about three minutes on each side and this is what it looks like. Yeah. <laughs> After 15 or 20 minutes, the water should be completely cooked out of your quinoa and it should be the desired consistency that you want. But if your quinoa isn't done and it's still a little hard, it's not fluffy, it's not edible, then just add a little bit more water and cook it down again until it reaches the desired consistency. And this concludes what I eat in a day to treat ovarian cysts. All recipes can be found in the description. Thanks for watching.